Hello everyone, this is Nidhi here. In this video, we will explore what is Docker, what are the benefits and the use cases of Docker, why people switches from non-containerization technique to containerization technique. So let's start with first what Docker means is. Docker, it is an open source lightweight platform that is based on the Linux containers and how it deploy in any applications. It uses the OS level virtualization to deploy any applications in, in the form of containers. Why it is helpful for the developer? So it makes very simple life for the developers to create or deploy their applications using containers because developer does not need to set up their local workstations for each of the application on which they are working. All they need is Docker installed on their system. And whatever package which developer has created, that package will directly work on any system directly. They do not need to install any software at the system level. So this is what Docker is. So I mentioned about container also. So let me just give you brief about what is container. Container is a, I can say container is a package sims that has your code and it has everything which is required to run your applications. Therefore, developers can easily deploy and run applications from one server to other or on multiple servers without any issues. They just need Docker installed on their system. After that, they can just, whatever they have packaged it, they just put it on that system and it will run as a container. So this is a diagram that is that shows what is the virtual setup and what is the container setup look like. So you have seen in the virtual setup, you have one host OS and on that you have different VMs, three VMs, four VMs, and under that you will install your application. So three VMs, you can say that these are the three servers. Under that your application is installed. Now we'll see how the container setup is. As I mentioned, for the container, what you need on the system is Docker installed. After that, you can have different kinds of containers, different kind of applications which are running as a container. So it's only one host which is hosting multiple applications in the form of containers. So this is the difference basically between the virtual setup and the container setup. Now we'll see what is the traditional approach of deploying any applications without Docker, like how we were deploying the applications, right? So just take an example here. We have a team who is building a project in Java language. Okay, so we have a project A and that project A needs Java and it needs MySQL. Okay, so what anybody or what a team will do? They need one server. So they spin up a new Linux servers, which has some memory like we have started with RAM 8 GB and storage 100 GB, right? They install the a specific Java version on this software like on this Linux server and deploy their applications. This is what we do traditional in traditional approach. We got the project, we got one servers, we, we installed all the softwares which are required and just deploy your applications. The application is up and running, no issues. Now again, after two months, they got the new requirement for building a new Java applications which requires different version of software and there could be different kinds of configurations also. So now what is the scenario? Now you have a project A and you have a project B. So project B is, is, is required Java 11 and it requires different version of MySQL also. So now what team will do? So they just check the uses of this applications, right? They just check the, they just monitor this app applications what is the CPU utilization for this project? And they realized that CPU utilization is very less. It is just 20%. It was not utilizing all the resources, okay? But the problem is for this new project, they cannot use the existing servers because of the different versions of software it's required. And also it is recommended that 
if you have a critical applications then you installed one application on each server you don't want to install multiple applications on one server so they ended up with the new server and deployed their applications there so now what is the structure project a it is installed on this one server and project b it is installed on this server right so what are the problems of this approach first the utilization under utilization of the server resource as i mentioned that project a was just using 20% of memory so 80% is not being used it is getting wasted and they are not able to use it in any other way because of the other projects dependencies and the softwares they need to maintain two servers it is the maintenance like you have two servers so you need to maintain put the monitoring for both the servers all those stuff and always a challenge when software needs to be upgraded right if you have to install the new version of java on this machine you will go you uninstall the previous version you install the new version you set the java home so all those things you need to do it on that machine right so these are the some issues with this approach and the local development issues when a developer is writing a code for project a that they, their machine needs to be set up for the java application for the java 1.8 version and if it is using mysql then also that so they need to set up their workstations to write the code right or any libraries dependencies they need to set up on their workstations like if it is using third party libraries to compile the project so so they need to set up all those things on the developer machines right and you must have seen that code is working on my machine but not on the other developer machine so all those local development issues also we see with our traditional approach because each developer has to set up their workstations with all the configurations of that project so whenever this leads to a problem whenever new developer comes he has to do all those setup also so now we'll see how docker a containerization technique will solve these type of challenges or the issues okay so how docker helps so i'll just let you know how docker works basically so in docker we build a image which contains all the instructions right which are required for your application so this is just a snippet of the code which says that we are using open jdk and we are copying this jar and just starting uh, then just starting the application so this instructions has java already installed and it can contain all the packages all the libraries which are required for your application so you will put everything in this so now what happens how the local development work for this in this case from the developer point of view developer does not need to install this open jdk or whatever version it is using to build their applications what they need it's a developer a machine it's a developer b machines right docker is installed that is the only thing they need they have the docker already installed and the image like we have this snippet of code and they they created the image so that image will be used by all the developers all the team members and they just run it so there is no chances that there could be any kind of issues related to the versions or related to the versions of the softwares because everybody is using the same image okay so this is one example how that now project a is running inside a container so this is how the container setup is i have one machine and docker is installed and your your application is running as a container so when you run a image that image has everything it has all the system software everything so when it is running as a container one it means this project this container inside this container you have java you have mysql or whatever is required for your applications and now for our second requirement right so for the second requirement what happens they will again create a new image with the different version of java and mysql and other dependencies and they launch the new container but they can host it on the same machine 
because though both the two containers are running separately it doesn't matter what is installed at the system level and they don't know what other containers are running which with other softwares they are independent so everything is integrated or it is present in the container only so what is the pros for the above approach first you don't need to have different vms or different servers for each applications you can assign the resources also for each container like your container one if you think that container one needs more cpu more memory you can assign different memory for container one and different memory for container two also so this makes sure that it is that you can utilize your resources in a very proper way according to the application size right in case of the new releases or upgrade of software like now suppose your java is installed like you are upgrading your software and it requires java 14 just an example so what you'll do how you will upgrade it on the server you just terminate the existing container whatever it is running and just launch the new container there is no system level settings it doesn't matter what you have configured on the system you just terminate and the launch the new containers there is no dependencies basically on which the machine is on which it is currently running and the main thing this will always resolve your issue that code is working on my development machine but code is not working on the production machine because in this case there is no settings which is being done at the system level everything is inside the image everything is coming as a script as the instructions to run a container so there could not be any kind of surprises when you do the production deployment i hope you like my video thank you